you got to understand that there's nothing new under the sun. The tactics that infiltrators will use are the same. And keep in mind who Korah, Dathan, and Abiram are also. Okay, the Bible tells us here, these aren't just outsiders from somewhere else. These aren't Moabites coming in and trying to stir people up against Moses and Aaron. These are coming from within the children of Israel. Not just that, Korah is a Levite, right? Now, Dathan and Abiram, they're sons of Reuben. They're not even having, supposed to have anything to do with the service to the Lord, with the tabernacle, with all of the other things that they're supposed to be doing. But Korah does. As a Levite, Korah has responsibilities within the service of the Lord. And here what they're doing is they're attacking the office of the priest. Now, the office of the priest was a very important office. All of the offices are very important, and we're going to see that. They all have ministering. They all have a job to do. And the priests was more front and center. The priests had a little bit more leadership. The priests are the one offering sacrifices. You know, the high priest is the one going into the holiest of holies. So there's, there's different positions that might garner more attention. But all of the jobs are important, and I'm going to get into that a little bit too. As we see... But what these people are doing are really wicked. And one of the motivations for what they're doing, as you see in Psalm 106, verse number 16 brings up a reference to this story. It says, They envied Moses also in the camp, and Aaron the saint of the Lord. The earth opened and swallowed up Dathan and covered the company of Abiram. And a fire was kindled in the company, and the, uh, the flame burned up the wicked. So right there, obviously, saying that they're wicked as well, really wicked people. But one of the motivations is just literally envy. They see Moses, they see Aaron. Oh, who do they think they are? Why are they so special? But they really want to be in that position. They want to be the ones. See, notice what they say is, you know, you take too much upon you seeing all the congregation are holy, right? What they're, what they're trying to do is bring them down by saying, hey, we're all in the same playing field here. We're all just equal with each other. So who do you think you are? And, uh, you know, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Isn't the Lord among all of us? Then why are you lifting up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord? But what do they want? They want to be in their spot. They're envious of that position. So, so they're, they're hiding the fact that they actually want to be the ones being the new leaders. But they try to get everyone, they, they appeal to more people by just putting the attack on them, saying, oh yeah, who do you think you are? And this is also a flattering type of an attack, too. Because on, on the one hand, they're bringing down men that God has raised up, right? Now, Moses didn't self-exalt. He wasn't just going around being like, oh, I'm this guy, you know. That's not Moses at all. That's clear. We're going to see that again later in the story. But all throughout Scripture, that is not the attitude that Moses ever, ever had. But that's what they're accusing him over and over. Multiple times in this story alone, we're going to see the false accusations going forth. Oh, you're taking too much on yourself. You're exalting yourself. Why, why should we all be bowing down to you and listening to you? And who made you leader? Well, you know what? God made him leader. God exalted him. God lifted him up. And Moses was better than those people. I'm not saying he was just better than all of them, but he was better than these wicked people right here. Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. He was a better person than they were. 